The last myth, boy, if I keep dancing, quit dancing around here. Hot gas reheat dehumidifies the air. We're going to talk a little bit about that and what hot gas reheat does and what it really does. So before we talk about hot gas reheat, let's talk about dehumidification. Let's define our terms. What does it mean? To help talk about that, let's get a reminder as to what dew point is. So dew point, as we talked about earlier, measures uh, the, the point at which moisture will drop out of suspension out of the air. So air's got water in it. And when something comes into contact with that, that's colder than the dew point of air, we get what's shown in this photo, right? You've got this um, beverage that comes out of the refrigerator, which is uh, a bottle of water, uh, or on Ryan's podcast, maybe something <laughs> a little bit different. <laughs> you take it out on the porch, and if the if the can is at 45 or 50 degrees, and let's say it's at 50 degrees, and the dew point of air is higher than that, you're going to get condensation on the on the can. So why is that important? Well, that's how we remove moisture from the air with HVAC systems. So if you look at this uh, drawing here, you'll notice um, the mixed air dew point is 59 degrees. If the coil's colder than that, which if your system's working right, it should be, you will get moisture removed from the air. So in this case, maybe the coil's 45, 46 degrees, you're getting 51 degrees off the call, right? So that's dehumidification, okay? We're actually removing moisture from the air. This is what it would look like psychrometrically um, if you were to plot on a psychrometric chart. I'm not going to spend a lot of time doing this. We've done a bunch of uh, uh, videos on these as well. Um, so that point right there is where dehumidification occurs. So this right here, you're going a little bit over sensibly. Then you go down, you're removing moisture from the air. This would be a cooling coil curve. This would be your return air, outdoor air, mixed air. Comes into the system and we remove sensible and latent heat um, from the air. And then we get a little bit of fan reheat and then we have a 0.8 sensible heat ratio or SHR which brings us up back to our back to our point. So, okay. So we talked a little bit about what dehumidification is. So let's look at the refrigeration cycle and the components and then we'll talk about how, re how reheat fits into that, okay? So here's a typical refrigeration cycle. Let me make sure you guys can see that, okay? All right. Um, okay, so okay, so four components to every you know refrigeration cycle from a water cooler up into a two thousand ton centrifugal chiller. They all have these basic four components, right? You've got a compressor, you've got a condenser, you've got a pressure drop device, expansion valve, etc., and you got your evaporator coil. So the refrigerant, this is a R410A example. So the temperatures and, and pressures represented here are for R410A. So typically 140-ish leaving the compressor. This high temperature gas goes out to your condenser, which rejects the heat to the relatively cool atmosphere and you know knocks it down 40-ish degrees, comes through your pressure drop device, which, which lowers the temperature and pressure of the refrigerant putting it into a state that it can be, you know, boiled off and changed of state in the evaporator core, which is really where we get our BTU absorption. And then we come back to the compressor. Just for kicks and giggles, the pressure of the high side is, you know, 375, 400-ish and, you know, 120-ish on the, on the low side. Not really important to this presentation, just to give you uh, some info there. So now we're going to talk about how hot gas reheat fits into that scenario. Okay, let's say you had an air conditioning system that was producing 45 degrees because you were dehumidifying for a, let's say a pharmaceutical mixing lab or something where they needed low dew point. And at some point, if you don't have a large load in the space, that air is going to be too cold. So if the air is too cold, what are your choices? Well, you can elevate the leaving air temperature, which it does not dehumidify as much. So maybe that's not an option. You could turn the unit off which if you're trying to dehumidify, that's not an option. I don't know, Ryden, do <laughs> units off dehumidify very well? No, no, they do not. Okay, which you find one that does, let me know. That would be a nice product to have. So, so <laughs> this is where reheat comes in, right? You're dehumidifying the air, you're pulling the moisture out of the coil, it's too cold for the space, and that's where we, that's how we reheat. So where, where could we pull some heat from this refrigeration system to reheat the air? Well, the, we're, we're rejecting all this heat out to the atmosphere, why don't we use some of that heat to reheat the air. And that's basically what hot gas reheat is, okay? We're taking the heat we would normally reject to the atmosphere. 
We're bringing that around into another coil that's downstream of the evaporator coil, and we're heating that up. Now, I would I would stress too, if you're going to specify or use hot gas reheat, use modulating hot gas reheat. Modulating hot gas reheat used to be a luxury, but I think it's pretty standard on most people's products. And if you don't have modulating, you're going to get you know 45 degree air or 80 degree air. You know, and that doesn't give you very <laughs> that doesn't, doesn't give you much of a window for working on it either. No, exactly. And um, you know. A lot of what I tell here, I've learned the hard way. So don't don't do what I did. You know, make sure it's modulating. So don't do what I did a lot a lot of years ago. So you know, so here's why here's why the, here's kind of the we're dispelling the myth, right? So it doesn't a hot gas reheat is heating the air sensibly. It doesn't dehumidify. So if you look back, going back to our old psychometric chart here, this would be the cooling and dehumidification curve. We're starting at a point entering the coil. It goes through the cooling coil. It decreases in temperature and humidity dehumidifies the air, and this line would represent your reheat. So what do we know when we move from this area of the chart, the left side to the right side? Well, it's sensible only, like it's just dry bulb temperature increase. You're not removing or adding any humidity to the air. Um, humidity only decreases as you go down in some way of the chart. That's my little arrow there. It's looking, looking pretty lame, but that's what it is. So, um, And then you would have like a few degrees of fan heat, and then you'd pick up your SHR, in this particular space, this is an extreme would be an extreme part load example where you're almost reheating the entire uh, sensible load for the space. A 0.53 SHR is extremely low. So, uh, 